We're joined today by Avi Johnston and Darren Klapik from Oak Park High School. Now, back in March, you went on an amazing service learning trip to Kenya. First of all, I need to know where the idea for this trip came from. Maybe, Darren, if you'd like to start and let us know. Yeah, it's actually our fifth time back to Kenya as a school. Uh, we started these trips in 2013 as a service learning trip and traveled out to the Mara uh, in West Kenya. And um, it, it's it's an awesome experience because you literally immerse yourself in their culture. And we went back in 2015, 2017, 2019. We were scheduled for 2021, but COVID hit and scuttled that trip. Uh, and the organization we would go with was uh, Free the Children through the WE Charities. And when they sold their Canadian holdings with the scandal around the uh, um, um, WE Day and, and using the Trudeaus and what have you, the uh, they stopped running the trips into Kenya. So we we were sad. We thought, well, oh, it's, it's an end to a great run. But then we were able to find another organization, Camps International, uh, that offered uh, something similar, and we worked with them to build a trip that would give the students like Abby the same kind of experience of immersing yourself in a culture and going and doing good service learning. So we flew out in March to uh, East Savo, uh, near Mombasa on the east side of Kenya, and um, went into that area and, uh, uh, yeah, had a, had a wonderful experience and um, uh, a life-changing experience. Now you say life-changing, Abby. Was this your first time on a trip like this? Yeah, for sure. It was definitely the farthest I've been from my parents, which was a big experience for me and them. Um, I've never been on that long of a plane ride, for sure. Um, but yeah, I've never experienced anything like it. And like Klapik said, I tell everybody it was truly a life-changing experience. And, you know, it's it was an amazing opportunity that I was able to go on as well as um, the other students that were able to go. Tell us a little bit about what happened while you were out there. Um, so we were able to do a lot of, like um, Clapic said, service um, for the people there. We got to um, build a mud house for one of the widowed mamas there, which was a really rewarding experience. We also got to do um, some work at the school, so primary and secondary school there. We got to help paint the classrooms and stuff like that, which was also very rewarding. And um, we also, one fun thing we got to do, we got to uh, deworm some goats. So we helped, we kind of went um, throughout the villages and in people's backyards almost, and we helped give them medicine so that they could, you know, live longer and be more healthy and provide income for the people there. Um, we also got to meet with the village mamas. Um, so Mama Mercy was the head mama that we got to meet with and we got to just experience and um, their story and luckily we got like they shared their story of just the women in the village and how they've overcome so much and we also got to make some um, elephant paper poop with them um, which was a cool experience and there was so much that every day was just a life-changing day. And one thing we didn't mention is that these women were all widows, correct? Yes, they were. Um, Mama Mercy spoke to us about how um, they fought for the rights of women, like these women that we were looking at, basically. Um, how not that long ago, young women there were being forced to marry very young at like 12 and 13. And then they would kind of lose track of these girls. And, you know... I think it was impactful for everyone there, just as students, but for me specifically, you know, just as a young girl, just hearing these stories about how these young females were being, you know, um, married so young, it was kind of like a reality check to me, you know, because it just put in perspective how many opportunities I'm given just as a young female to have an education and also just the rights that I have here. And it honestly just changed my perspective even coming back. Now, Darren, you've obviously been on a few of these trips. What has been the most memorable thing for you to watch when you see these students get to experience something like this, like Abby going for her first time and seeing all these kids maybe maybe experiencing something like this for the very first time ever? Yeah, I think, I think when kids sign up for it, I think ideally what they're most excited about, obviously, is the safari. 
And that's kind of the one touristy thing we do while we're there. And we're not going to go all that way and not go on safari. But once they get there and they start to experience the people, and, and these are the most incredible people. They, they, they live subsistent lifestyles, which basically means they're, they're living to live to tomorrow. Uh, they're, not, they're not saving up for a vacation or, or a university or, or a new car. They're literally living day to day. And so um, watching the students kind of realize that, that they have an opportunity to do something special in helping these people, um, and suddenly that's what becomes the main focus. And while the safari is cool, I think if you ask every student what they enjoyed the most, they'll tell you it's one, the children that we get to see and play with at the mm-hmm. schools. And then just the people in general, because they are the happiest people and they literally have nothing, but they are so happy and so proud to share with us what they do have. Uh, I think that has the biggest impact on the students. Speaking of impact, Abby, I know you mentioned it a little bit, but what was the most memorable or the most impactful moment on this trip for you? Um, Yeah, again, kind of like I said, um, kind of a mix of, um, you know, building that house for a widowed mama. Um, That was kind of the whole trip. We it was obviously very impactful, but that was kind of the one day where we all when we came back at lunch, we kind of all looked at each other and we were like, we're changing somebody's life today. And we knew that, like, what we were doing was really important and it was changing somebody. And, you know, like, when I took a step back and I really looked at it, um, it, like, it was just so crazy to me that, like, we had the ability to do this for somebody. And um, one of the things that us as a group we decided is actually we didn't finish the house in one day. So we had one day to do it. um, And the next day was um, for another activity. But we as a group, um, we all kind of asked the teachers and also the camp organizers. We were like, were we, are we able to go back, like split our time in between this activity and then also keep working on the house? Um, because we all saw how important it was and we, were all, we all wanted to finish this house for this widowed mama and her children because we knew that she didn't have a place to live and we wanted to get that done for her. And, you know, just seeing all of us as a group kind of come together and see how important it was to everybody, it was really impactful to me just to see how much we've come to, we came together as a group um, and kind of all saw this bigger thing that we could be a part of. You, a- you asked about the impact of what I see in the students. Uh, they were crushed after that first day that we had not finished the house. And they were to a, to a person adamant that they wanted to go back. And, and finish that house so that she could move into it. And we did, like Abby said, shuffle our schedule to send back half a group in the morning and then another half in the afternoon to actually finish the house. Uh, all the outside walls, most of the inside walls that she could move into it. And so just seeing the, the, the desire and the fortitude to, to get that done, uh, that, that just spoke volumes to the impact of this kind of trip. Abby, you said it was life-changing. How did, how has it changed your perspective now looking forward on life after experiencing something like this? Yeah, you know, coming back um, just after being there for, you know, the amount of time we were, um, I just became so much more grateful for the little things that I have here and obviously the opportunities that I'm given, like I said. Um, You know, even just the luxury of having, like, cold water or ice Mm -hmm. here um, or having, like, hot water for a shower just little things like that that I think before I took so much for granted. You can, I mean, I think us as a group, we all talked about, oh, like, we're so lucky to have all the things that, like, you can say it as much as you want, right? Um, but until you truly look at these people who, like Clapic said, are the most, like, the happiest people I've ever met and truly, like, the most genuine people who literally have nothing and they are just so positive coming back, I kind of looked at what I'm given and everything that I have and how I can be negative sometimes, you know, and kind of focus on the little things, like the little, like nitpick almost. And um, I just have been way more grateful for everything that I'm given, you know, um, just the little things and also the big things that um, I like am able to have here. Now, Darren, another beautiful part of this project is these kids came back. And we're like, hey, we got to do more. <laughs> Tell our listeners what happened from there when they returned back to Winnipeg and back to high school. 
Yeah, when we were uh, working with the village mamas and we were beading with them and making uh, elephant dung paper, just just kind of seeing how they earn an income uh, to be self-sustaining, um, we were able to sit down, uh, Jeanette Lafreniere, uh, one of my travel partners uh, on the trip, we sat down with Mama Mercy, um, who was kind of the matriarch of the uh, community. And we just asked her, we said, if you had one wish, what would it be? And she told us that it would be to provide a goat to each of the 43 widows in her community. And Jeanette and I looked at each other and we just said, done, we'll, we'll make it happen. And so from that point on, our goal was to go back and raise enough money. Now, a, a goat in Kenya costs about 8,000 Kenyan shillings, which is the equivalent of $84 Canadian. So there were 43 widows. Uh, we wanted to provide one goat for each, a female goat, a couple of male goats as well, and then some medicine to deworm them for at least a couple of years. So the goal was to raise roughly over $4,500. $4, and when we got back, we sat with the kids, we brainstormed some ideas, uh, started it off right away with a uh, trivia pizza luncheon on a PD day with the staff who were great at getting involved. Um, we also had the idea, Heather Michael, another one of our travel teachers, uh, came up with the idea of printing these adoption certificates. And so we offered people the opportunity to adopt uh, a goat. They could name it um, and they would get a certificate. And we, we made sure that every certificate had a unique goat on it. And so Heather Googled as many goats as she could find <laughs> to print on these uh, documents. And then uh, suddenly it just took off. We had uh, sports teams, uh, individual students on their own coming in and saying, hey, I want to I want to adopt a goat. And uh, it just took off from there. And in about a month and a half, we'd hit our goal and we're able to uh, send the funds over to Mama Mercy. Uh, and then a couple of Saturdays ago, we got the video of the goats being delivered and it was uh, it was spectacular to watch. Abby, what was it like to see that uh, you went out to Kenya, you brought Kenya back to the community and the community gave back once again, it, it came full circle. What did it feel like to see all that? You know, when the teachers came to us as a group and presented the idea, we were um, immediately all on board. Um, and, you know, being at a high school, sometimes it's hard for kids to, you know, the kids who weren't on the Kenya trip, we were worried because we were like, maybe they won't understand, you know buying a goat but they don't receive the goat you know stuff like that but um seeing the give back just like sports teams come together and even little groups of people like Clapic said come together and say we'll buy one or we want to help it was just it was amazing to see you know how other people can care so much about something that we do um and you know kind of share the bigger picture with the school and just the community so that people can it was kind of a piece of our trip that we could share with others to kind of be like, we met these amazing people and we want to continue to help them and we want your help as well. Um, and it was just, it was amazing to see our school come together as a whole. I love that. I love how the community got involved. Is there anything else now moving forward um, that you plan to do for this village? Um, yeah, we won't lose contact with them. Um, I have so many friends in Kenya now. Um, that uh, I stay in touch with on a daily basis. It's it's the kind of trip where, and I and I tell the kids this, and and I still I'm still in contact with students from our very first trip in 2013. Uh, and I ask them, I say, is there ever a day that goes by that Africa doesn't pop into your head? And they literally say no. They they think about it at least once a day, every day, and will for the rest of their life. And so uh, we have some very good friends over there who we've continued to help. Um, we were the first school to, uh, on their own, sponsor a young lady for four years of high school at the Kisaroni School for Girls. Uh, we're quite proud of that. Uh, we have uh, helped out their families during um, hard times. Drought is something that happens quite often. So we've, uh, we've quite often sent uh, uh, relief and funds to help them get through those tough periods of time. So it's, it's, it's the connections we made that will never end. I mean, Mama Mercy is now a part of our life and will be a part of our life forever. Uh, and so anything they need that we can help with, it's, it's, such, a, it's such a small effort on our part, but the, the result of what 
comes from that is like Gabby said, is life changing for them. And so just knowing that it, it makes it easy to, uh, to want to help these people and, and stay in touch. And, and, and we're all a family now. You can, you can't take a trip like this and not become a family. Uh, we're not in hotels where you're, you know, staying in your own room for hours on end and, and sightseeing and that you, you're forced to become a family and, mm-hmm you know, uh, warts and all like, yeah, just, uh, that's, that's the, that's the living style we live there. And, and it's, uh, uh, it's, it's an incredible experience. So it's something that, uh, uh, I know Abby and I will share for the rest of our lives together. And, uh, I feel that with all the students that we've taken. Abby, is this something you're in grade 11? Is this something you hope to do again next year? Um, you know, if Kenya was an option next year, I would for sure be first on that list, but I think they're, uh, taking a year or two break, but um, I have a younger brother who's in grade nine, and if the trip is an opportunity in the future, I think my parents have seen, you know, just how changed I have become since coming back from Kenya, um, that he would for sure be on that list to sign up. Um, but yeah, if it was an option, I would be first on the plane. Thank you so much for making time. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.